Hello, I'm uh, happy to be here today. So, uh, after the musings of my colleague, uh, I will bring you the serious stuff of Riddle and Code. So, Riddle and Code is in truth a deep tech technology. Yes, not a lot of fun. <laughs> so, okay. Um, can I switch the slides? So, Riddle and Code is an interface company as far uh, as we make anything which is related to virtual currencies and uh, to tokens, certificates, uh, blockchain, public ledger technology, touchable. And uh, we do it by creating our very own hardware. So this means we really build hardware. So we program FPGAs, we program MCUs, and we build all these uh, boards, and then we produce them in series. So it's still a quite new market, not many blockchain companies are doing anything like this. And uh, uh, therefore, we are confronted with a lot of challenges which are quite untypical for the classical uh, blockchain company. Uh, we agree with everybody that uh, one of the most important and critical issue of blockchain technology is the question about identity. So blockchain technologies are formative technologies as far as they are going to specify the technology and the society which is using this technology. So they are forming the world of tomorrow and they redefine how we as humans interact with machines on a communicative and uh, on a level of community. So decisions will not only be made by humans anymore. We delegate mandates to machines. So machines get identity and we have to deal with it. But the problem is that this identity uh, is not really secure. So you all have heard about uh, this theme of uh, self-sovereignty, where we say we give to ourselves digital identity in interacting with digital systems. So it's super important. So it's at the end about harmonizing the identity of humans and the identity of machines in a way that we can trust each other. And uh, to give these identities to the machines and to ourselves, we use cryptography. And uh, I want to ask you, how many people of you are developing with BigchainDB? OK. How many of you use uh, a classical uh, CPU-driven machine to do this? OK, so more or less everybody. So what this means is that the CPU you use to operate a blockchain, in this case, BigchainDB, is your crypto processor. Yes, and uh, the problem with crypto processors is that you can compromise them in so many ways. Yeah, there are companies which are already producing uh, crypto processors like uh, NXP, uh, Infineon, uh, uh, ST micro and so on. And if you talk to their engineers and ask them, how many ways do you know to compromise a crypto processor? Yes, would you believe that there are more than 70? So that's a real problem. Yes, we have this fantastic new infrastructure and it's based on cryptography and it's super secure, but it's most of the time only secure on the software level and not on the hardware level. And now imagine we have a society, yes, where uh, your identity depends on this kind of system. So uh, <clears throat> it's very dangerous. And this is why we are really actively developing hardware, which is capable to bring you also the hardware security and combine it with the fantastic possibility of open ledger systems like BigchainDB. How do we do it? So Normally, when you deal with crypto, you use crypto hardware to offload the crypto. This means no secret should ever be readable to anybody. Yes, you protect your keys. I mean, it sounds so simple and it's so complicated. Yes, you, you all know from the early days of Bitcoin how many keys have been stolen, yes, even at the exchanges level. Yes, so key protection is still a big issue and handling is a big issue. This is why we have hardware wallets for example, from Ledger and Tracer. And next thing is acceleration. This is totally missed out. Yeah? How, if you, for example, want to uh, use signatures and you want to do signatures up to a point of 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000 per second, we don't have any system which is capable to do signature within this amount of time. Yeah? So this time-restricted security of the original blockchain 
and the uh, mathematical extensive calculation of uh, cryptography makes systems most of the time slow. But if we are not getting up to speed and will be capable to sign 3,000 signatures per second, yes, we will not be capable to compete with the existing legacy systems. Yes, then we have device hardening. This means everything we do to make hardware secure. And then we have to make it resilient. Resilience means the systems have to work even in case they go down for a certain amount of time. Okay, so this is one of our boards. Uh, it consists basically of a crypto accelerator, a microcontroller, and a lot of other components. What you don't see is that these comp uh, components are protecting each other. So if you unmount the antenna, the system is compromised and stops working. So it's not giving you an identity. It tells you, I cannot do it, I'm compromised. If you replace uh, the microcontroller, the microcontroller has a shared secret with the antenna, and with the crypto accelerator, the system stops, and so on. So it's really super, super secure. So <clears throat> is it possible to make a crypto processor which is super secure? Yes. Is it possible to make it uh, and to avoid that it is going to be compromised? Yes. I can tell you, with the means we have today, we cannot make any hardware really secure. It's impossible. It's really impossible. So I told you, over 70 ways to compromise the microcontroller. Yes, so you can steal the key. Easy, sometimes, shouldn't be, gets better. Yes, you can physical tamper with the device. So you get into the microcontroller, you get into the crypto chip, and then you use something like probing. Probing means you use a microscope and some kind of needle, and then you really get to the, to the board uh, and to the line of the boards to read what is flowing within the controller unit. Yes, you have something like memory remnants. So when you operate with your machine, a lot of data is still around. Even if you turn off the machines, yes, most of the time, parts of the memory stay active for weeks. Yes, something people forget way too often. Then you have more sophisticated things that you freeze your microcontroller or your crypto chip, and the moment you freeze it, it stays up for months. Yes. So recently, Tracer had this problem. Some people froze a Tracer, the hardware crypto wallet, and then they were able to read out uh, the secret. Uh, then you have to monitor the radio frequency and the electromagnetic signals. It's a so-called sideline attack. It's one of the uh, most uh, most, most, most successful ones. Yes, so even the secured devices are, are prone to this kind of uh, intervention. So we cannot protect any crypto processor reliably today. But what we can do is we can, it make, uh, we can make it very, very difficult uh, regarding the necessary time to compromise the system. Uh, and we can make it very expensive. Yeah? So, for example, probing is possible all the time. So you don't use lasers, you don't use microscope, you use a yawn beam. With a yawn beam, you can get into any machine. Yeah? There's no way around. It's just a matter of time, how long it takes you to read all the information. So maybe it takes you one month, maybe two months, maybe three months, yes? But you cannot avoid it. So you, you have to keep this in mind. And uh, to, to, to react to this kind of challenges with security by obscurity, which is very convenient for many companies, yes, you will not succeed. Yes, please, don't even try to invent your own algo. We saw it with uh, Yota recently. Yes, it doesn't work. So don't uh, 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 protect it with protocol failure and take care that you are not coming up with too much uh, functions. So what we can say is that you, what you have to do is, yes, keep the processes as simple as possible. Assure that your data get really destroyed. So once your machine has worked with the key, destroy the key, yes? Reduce the need to trust humans. It's super important. The machines have to work without any intervention, yes? And protect it against legal attacks, yes? Even, even secure systems like Intel SGX and so on have backdoors because they are forced by, by regulatory uh, uh, environments, yes, and protect the system against disconnect. So uh, it's possible to come up with such an architecture, and this is exactly what we did. So you see it here. We have a dedicated hardware we built for Big Chain DB. 
So what we want to contribute to the uh, community is a dedicated BigchainDB IPFS server, which is protecting state-of-the-art open source, yes, uh, and reliable as much as possible uh, your blockchain and public ledger. So we have a first prototype. It's not going to be big. It's really quite small, and it works very well. So just very fast an overview over the components. So we have a core for the public data and the public processes. Yes, we have a so-called secure module, which is doing all the crypto processes off the bus, and it's even uh, within a special coating, so you cannot drill in it, you cannot probe it, and so on. So we have an FPGA cybercaster. This is an FPGA, which is already capable to do 1,600 signatures per second, which is, as far as I know, one of the best results available. And to make it resilient, we have even connected a software-defined radio. This means if you disconnect from the internet, if, uh, uh, if your ethernet goes down, you still can receive signals either via satellite or via some uh, 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 low-power uh, wide area network. Okay, that's it, thank you. As a nerd, this gives me goosebumps, um, and I'm sure every one of you as well. Um, do we have time for one question uh, for Tom, please. so please go ahead. Pinay? Uh, how much oh. per unit? Oh, sorry. How much per unit? You mean the price? Yeah. Oh, it's, the price is not an issue, yes? I think we can do... <laughs> No, 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 it's important, you know, because uh, these uh, hardware secured models start at, at dozens of thousands, yes? So uh, if we can do it the way we want to do it, I guess the production price will be around 24 euro. Well, doesn't mean we are going to sell it that way, right? <laughs> Amazing.